All right, guys, so today is National Make a New National Holiday Day, okay? So we need to come up with a new national holiday day for today. Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. Yeah? National Fear Day. Ooh, uh -huh. that one's good. It involves children and adults. You see, the adults, they let the children loose around public, and the children have to hide, or else the adults will you know, do something bad to them. Fun for the family. Like a messed up version of hide and seek. I was thinking more like uh, uh, cops chasing robbers, except when the robbers get caught, they get slapped and killed. It's National Fear Day. We should do National Make Things Out of Duct Tape Day. We have to get a bunch of duct tape, and we have to survive a full 24 hours using only things we made out of duct tape. Oh. Eh? Here you go. National Duct Tape Day. You fool! That's not duct tape! Uh, you killed us oh, all! No. Get this scum out of here! Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Oh, uh, guys, oh, cool. how about this? National Surprise Cameo Day. Get no, out. get out. Go! Please. Just be back down under the table. You know, like, I try to nurture and Un teach you guys. Back under the table. Back, this is back the to the cage! This is National Disappoint Chris Day. <clears throat> well then, what was your idea, Nick? Uh, let's not do that idea. That I don't know about that Yeah, one. that seems uh, a little weird. Yeah, it's, mm, I don't know. National Cameo Day, National Disappoint Chris Day. I don't know. Um, let's not use those. I, I, you have a suggestion? I do, actually. Okay, okay. Uh, my, uh, I have an idea. This, uh, where I come from, we do okay. this. It's a very interesting uh, tradition we have. Please, in, uh, do tell. In uh, the place I'm from. And essentially, what it is, we call it uh, National Salt Day. Oh. And this is a doozy. So basically what we do on National Salt Day is we will take the nearest salt shaker and we will bring it out in public and people will be like, look at that guy. Look at that guy celebrating National Salt Day. You know, what a, what a real hero. What a great guy participating in a national holiday in this place that we live in. And, and then they all are like, wow. And then they pick up rocks and they throw it at the guy holding the salt. Because National Salt Day. It's assault. It's assault. Uh, and then, yeah. Salt the wounds. There you go. That's what he uses to clear up his wounds is the salt. He dashes on there. He fixes himself right back up. And all the people are like, wow. You know, what a, what a champ. What a true hero. And then they threw, and then then they throw more rocks at him, and that that is the story on how we we as a people have created the sport of soccer. Oh, oh, the, the horror of National Salt Day! Oh, the the irony of not having salt in the salt shaker on Salt Day! Oh, the humanity! Oh. Alright guys, so, no, that's weird. Uh, hey, National Salt Soccer Day? Salt Day. It's S National Salt Day. Sports Salt? Alright. That's not what I said. So, yeah. yes. we're gonna do what we're gonna actually do. You have a suggestion. This might be a little self-centered, but we're gonna do National B. Ethan Day. No! Okay. Wait, hear him out. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so, what's gonna happen is everyone is gonna dress up in my skin, and they're gonna put on my clothes, and they're gonna go and walk around, and just be me for a day. But there's only one skin of you. No, that's where you're wrong. You cut it off? See, the day before National Ethan Day is gonna be National Make New Skin Day. And so basically they just make me over and over again and then just glue it to the outside of other people. Do you get it? 
Yeah, I get it. Okay. So then, so then, what they're gonna do is they're just gonna walk around all the time and order their lunch and their lattes just like normal, and it'll be all fine and dandy. Just everyone will look like me. Do they grow Ethan's? Is that where they get the skin? Yes. If it's some sort they of grow meat. Ethan's, then then murder them, slicing off their skin. Yes. Is this some sort of cloning facility? Of your DNA. It's a skin yes. facility, a flesh facility. Yeah, but there's no internals, it's just the skin that then you go and put on people. It's like a mask. That must hurt. But for your whole body. That must hurt. They don't have skin, like from here to. I don't know. To your feet? That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and then everyone's just gonna be happy because they're me. I'm pretty sure people can get sick from the, all the blood. Oh, wait, Nick. No, there's no blood. It's just I, skin. Uh, there's, what I'll, do you mean there's just skin? It's just I wanna, skin. I wanna it's try plastic this. skin. I, I like this idea, okay. except I don't. But I do, though. But I don't. <clears throat> I've got it! National Indecisive Day! Oh! Boom. That's a good one. That's, that's good. Use that. I'm gonna go write that down over Dude, here. Dude, use that for the, the, the skit we're filming. Oh yeah! Use that. Hi everyone, and welcome to Speak of the Devils, brought to you by Paste. You remember Paste. Mmm, delicious. Today, we have a wonderful lineup featuring sketches, cooking, and a musical act. But before we get to all of that, our guest today is BHS Tech Director, Mr. Wong. So, what do you do at the school? Uh, so, first of all, thanks for the job upgrade. I'm actually the Instructional Technology Specialist for the school, not the Tech Director. Um, so, I um, am the teacher for the Student Help Desk, um, which uh, I think a lot of students may know, uh, or I think most people should know uh, at BHS. So essentially we provide tech support to students and teachers that come in and we work on like very special projects, uh, projects for the school um, that are related to technology. So about this robot, uh, why do we have Baxter? Why do we have Baxter? So um, Baxter was actually a donation from a Burlington parent and uh, essentially uh, the G2 uh, group is the name of the company. Uh, Glenn Grant is the name of the parent, and he has students, uh, I believe, at the elementary level. So they had purchased Baxter several years ago and felt that uh, they had pretty much used uh, Baxter to whatever purposes you know, they uh, needed to use Baxter. And they decided to donate Baxter to us so that we could learn uh, how um, the robot works and just kind of do special projects with, with it or him. <laughs> so how does the robot help the school? So at this point, we're still kind of like experimenting with Baxter a little bit because uh, the robot kind of came into my room late um, in the spring of last school year. Um, so essentially, my students and just anybody that's been interested has come in and just we've done uh, basic operations with it. We haven't really done anything in depth. Uh, I believe the larger goal, though, is to have Baxter teach kids, it could be elementary kids, because as I said, Mr. Grant has students uh, at, uh, at an elementary school here in Burlington. It uh, is a robot that's very easy to use, so essentially you're able to manipulate its arms and have it pick up objects and then place them. So as far as like an actual activity that it could do to help the school, we haven't really determined that yet. At this point, we're just sort of learning the basics of the robot and uh, we will use it for different like projects and things like that. I believe Mr. Musselman at the Science Center has some plans to do a sort of robotics um, fair or something like, like that um, in February or March in which we'll be able to showcase Baxter a little bit more to some students. Mm -hmm. um, just on a side note, is he programmable or is he remote control? So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit complicated in that uh, there are two different ways that Baxter can be sort of programmed. So the original idea of, of Baxter was that robots are very difficult to use um, uh, traditionally in that you do have to program a robot to do certain things. So that means understanding code and writing code for the robot to do the operations you want to do. So with Baxter, and I apologize that we, wouldn't, we were not able to get Baxter in the studio. Baxter is a little bit unwieldy. It's almost like a 200-pound robot. 
Uh, but the idea is, I think, when you, you'll look at footage and pictures that we have, you're able to grasp kind of like the cuff of the arm of the robot and then move it in the location where you want it to, pl to pick up an object. And then there are buttons that are on the cuff of the, uh, the arm or the hand. And when you push those buttons, that allows an object to be picked up. And then you're moving the arm over to where you want the object to be placed or dropped. And that's kind of like the essential basic function of it. So really anybody um, that can learn those basic maneuvers can sort of program Baxter, so to speak. Um, there is a way for Baxter to have its operating system kind of wiped and replaced with a different kind of like robot operating system in which uh, if you had like a game controller or if you, um, you know, knew the code, you could actually program it sort of like more traditionally. So that's kind of our hope down the line to be able to use Baxter in that way uh, because we obviously have lots of high school students that are interested in Baxter, um, you know, from a more like advanced programming aspect. But since Mr. Grant's kids are at the elementary level and we're going to do events with younger kids, um, essentially we're kind of keeping it in the current operating system that operating system that it's in and then at some point we'll switch over you can't really like dual boot as they say um you know kind of in the computer world um so that's that's the thing that we sort of learn early on and uh so it's a little bit of a complication but hopefully we'll be able to do all the things we want to do with it you know down the line kind of awesome. a long-winded answer sorry about that but that's fine. Awesome. Uh, well, up next, get ready for 900 frames of cinematic mediocrity with our 30-second short films. BCATS High School Club teamed up into three groups to see if they could tell an intriguing and coherent story in just half a minute. They almost succeeded. I'm getting too old for this. I hear you've got some intel. I'm getting too old for this. Hmm. I'll have to look into this. Getting too old for this. You said that, Mr. Pastrami. I'm getting too old for this. So we have a couple questions for the robot, um, or well, about the robot, mm -hmm. um, more in depth. So is Baxter capable of love? Uh, it's a very interesting question. Uh, I, I would say no. Uh, essentially, I, I thought this was a family program, but uh, anyway. Uh, no, so <laughs> essentially, uh, it, what you bring up is a very funny uh, question because there are people that think that eventually there will be robots that will be sort of like companions to people and whatnot. But since Baxter is pretty basic, um, I'd say, yeah, probably not. Unless picking and placing up uh, objects is something that would be lovable, which I don't know, maybe some people would be. Does Baxter have an Instagram? Baxter does not have an Instagram, but I'll, I'll put in a quick plug uh, for our Twitter feed. Uh, so we're at, at BHS Help Desk. My personal Twitter is at uh, Leroy Wong. Uh, so we probably will have like pictures and videos of Baxter, you know, throughout the year as we do events. But uh, Baxter himself or itself does not have any social media. Currently. What kind of events do you do with Baxter? 
Uh, so as I said, Mr. Musselman with the Science Center is going to have uh, some sort of event where we will be able to showcase Baxter and have um, children try out Baxter. I think it's more geared towards, like I said, elementary school students. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to have actually a Computer Science Education Week um, event coming up, I believe, the first week of December. So students will be able to come to the help desk, kind of check out Baxter and other things that we do at the help desk. The BCAT crew hit the streets to see what their classmates are thankful for this Thanksgiving. Check it out, and while you're watching, think what you're thankful for. Hi, what's your name? Liam Brown. Liam, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Uh, my friends and family. That's good. Okay, thank you. Bye. Hey, what's your name? Vincent. Hi, um, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Socks. Socks. That's good. All right, thank you. What's your name? Matthew. Uh, Matthew, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Uh, for the Thanksgiving? Yeah. What do you well, What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my family. It's a good answer. Hi, what's your name? Ishan Datar. Ishan, what is you? What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Uh, what do you say? What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? I'm thankful for uh, my parents, my family, and um, everything. That's good. Thank you. Hi. What do you think? Um, yeah, wow. Yeah. Hi. Um, what's your name? Ryan Devereaux. Ryan, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Whoa. Colin New York. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Hi, hey. Colin. Hi, Ethan. What am I doing here? What are you thankful for? Oh, what am I thankful for? Uh, I'm thankful for my family, friends, uh... Uh, I think that's and, good. Uh, I'm still living. I mean, you know, sometimes you just got to be thankful for the basic stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, not every day you can wake up and say, I'm still alive. That's true. See, that's every day except one, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's oh, pretty important. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name's uh, Benny. Benny, uh, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Uh, I'm not sure. Like, I'm not really sure. All right, thank you. Hi, what's your name? I'm Joe. Hi, Joe. What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? You know, I'm thankful for my friends and family. It's pretty lucky to have all of them around side me, you know, especially in the winter time and when Christmas and Thanksgiving is upcoming. It's really nice to have them all around you, be in good wealth and have some food together. It's really nice to just enjoy them, you know? Yeah. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? My name is Melanie Thibodeau. Hi, Melanie. What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? I'm thankful for my life, my friends and family, and everything else. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Dan. Hi, Dan. What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Uh, I'm thankful for this guy, Colin. Um, hey. And he's back. Yeah. I'm back? What do you mean? Ask me what I'm thinking. Thank you. The big question that's on all our minds, can Baxter cook? As a Thanksgiving treat, here's the most talented member of BHS TV with a brand new segment of Half Baked. Hi, I'm Maddie Shipka and I'm here for Speak of the Devils TV. And I'm going to show you how to make the most of your Thanksgiving leftovers. This is a Thanksgiving turkey sandwich, so there's turkey, there's stuffing, there's potatoes, there's gravy, and there's cranberry sauce. But most importantly, this is a three-layer sandwich with crunch and savoriness and like softness and just amazingness. Because it's like Thanksgiving came back and it's like, hey, you forgot about me, but not really, because you already had me, but I'm back and better than ever. So look at me, I'm a sandwich now, and that's even awesome. -er. Basically what makes a sandwich really like soft and squishy is the third piece of bread you have um, that goes in the center. It's like a triple decker sandwich that you actually put into the gravy. So that little piece of, this wonderful piece of bread is gonna like just swim in the gravy. That's gonna sop up, get really nice and gushy. It's just gonna be really nice, especially if you're like you're making this for your lunch the next day. That's gonna really keep it all nice and soft. So after that, you can use your cranberry sauce as a condiment, kind of like your mayo or your mustard on a regular sandwich, but now it's better, because it's Thanksgiving. So you can just slather that on there all nice and, uh, nice and thick, and then you can take your turkey and put your turkey on there. And I like it, you can put it on like deli meat, like you can slice it, like you know how you do on Thanksgiving, or you can chunk it up and uh, it leaves really nice crevices for the stuffing to go on there. So, you just get all that yumminess on there. Slash it in beforehand. Get all that yumminess on there. So we have all our stuffing on one side of it, 
And then we can throw some potatoes on there, all nice and yummy. Potatoes are great. Uh, they're nice. It's fine with lumps, without lumps. It's your sandwich, you know. It's just, it's fantastic all around. This is when you kind of load it up with your nice squishy piece of gravy bread. And then you just repeat, you put your turkey and then your stuffing and then your mashed potatoes right on top of that again. And then you can flip this bad Larry over. You got a really thick sandwich, but it looks awesome. And then if you're feeling ambitious, which we are, you can clean this up a little bit and move it to the stove. As you can see here, we have our stove and we have our frying pan, we have our sandwich. We have a spatula, tongs, everything you need to fry this baby up like a gra grilled cheese. So, um, first you're gonna throw your butter down on the pan like you would anything, or you can put it on the sandwich itself, it doesn't matter all up to the way you want to do it. Okay, and this is the hard part. This is why we have tongs. Getting the sandwich on and off in one piece. Okay, and you wanna have it on low so it cooks slowly. Take a piece of tin foil, nice tin foil. Just kind of put it over it so it kind of keeps the heat in. Gets it all nice and cooked up, all yummy full. Uh, and right now it's a great time to be packing up um, any other food stuff you may have, like uh, all your leftovers. You can give yourself a couple minutes. Like this is, this is gonna take a couple minutes since it's such a big sandwich. Um, so yeah, feel free to like package your stuff up. But speaking of packaging, what did the turkey say when they wrapped him up as leftovers? Boiled again! Ah, shucks. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yum. It's gonna be great. And the sandwich is gonna make it even greater. She's gonna like. <sighs> this is great for like the dinner after, like. At, not after Thanksgiving dinner, but the day after. Uh, great for breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's great to keep your kids out of Black Friday traffic. Uh, yeah, they'll be like, ooh, Black Friday, turkey sandwich. Ooh, which one do I go for? That turkey sandwich. So, as we see here, this little guy, we have to check him. To check him every once in a while. He's getting kind of toasty underneath there. Not yet though, not yet. He's got a couple more minutes. I'm keeping it on a low heat so all of it gets nice and warm and yummy and just fantastic. And now we wait. We continue to wait until this little guy gets all crisped up. Yeah. Josh should probably check him again. Cause he was getting there. Ooh, he's looking nice, he's looking nice. So now we take our tongs and this is very dangerous. Risky, risky business, risky business. So, gotta scoop him up real nice. And he's falling apart. He's falling out. There we go, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, there we go. He's still good, he's still good. Beauty's on the inside, we all know that. And look at how golden brown and delicious that is. It looks phenomenal. It, it's just, the bread may rip a little bit, but that's okay, because it's a very messy sandwich anyway. They, they wanted to call it a Sloppy Joe, but my name is Maddie. We wait again. Uh, so, are we just, now that it's flipped over, we should just play all of the past waiting in reverse, right?
So now we're all set. He's got a nice little bum going on. We can put him there for now until it's time to find another spot. This is your finished sandwich and you can stick some frilly toothpicks in there, cut it right in half, in a triangle preferably, because that's the best way to eat a sandwich. We should all know that. Uh, plate it on a cute little Tom Turkey napkin for, uh, left over from the holiday season, because we all know that we have plenty of those napkins lying around. And then just say, bon voyage. Wait. Bon appetit. <laughs> Lastly, we have a musical act from one of the Real School of Music's ensembles featuring high school member Cameron Webb. This is Untitled. I'm Lily on keys, Ishan on drums, Derek on guitar, and Cam on bass. <laughs> Well, wasn't this just a great episode? We watched some ridiculously short films, but not short enough. Got in a Thanksgiving spirit, heard some local music, and, most importantly, prepared for the inevitable robot takeover. Speaking of such, thank you, Mr. Wong, uh, for a great interview. Thank you for having me. Appreciate and I hope it. Everything goes really well with Baxter. Thank you. <laughs>